Hi again. It's day four of the 30 days, 30 tips on productivity in Mind Your Own Revisions. Who am I? I am Dr. Özgün Ünver, uh, a burnout and well-being coach for academics who also tends to help them with productivity, time management, confidence, imposter syndrome, and all the like. Without further ado, let's start with today's tip. Uh, today, I would like to talk about uh, effective time management. And I would like to share one of my absolute favorite methods uh, to effectively manage my time. And it is called time blocking. Before we start, though, I would like to say that today's tip builds on the, the second tip I gave uh, two days ago that was about dividing your work into tiny, small micro tasks. So if you haven't checked that out yet, go uh, check that one out first and then come back with already the idea of uh, knowing what what micro tasks are now assuming that you have already checked out that episode let's start with today's topic which is time blocking well basically the idea is very simple you take your so-called to-do list uh, with with the tasks ideally micro tasks uh, but you don't have to always include them in your schedule as micro tasks. It's handy to have them. You don't have to schedule it that way. You basically schedule all your work in that week on your calendar. Many people use online calendars for this. I also do that. I use my uh, Google calendar to put my work in order for the coming week or weeks. Um, but you can certainly do that on paper as well. The advantage of doing this on an online calendar is that you can shift things around, you can shorten the period of time, lengthen it, uh, move things around and be more uh, flexible. Well, with the pen on paper version, you will have to scrap a lot of things and write them back, at least if you are like me. If you are someone who can make a schedule and stick to it 100%, great, more power to you. I am not such a person, so I need that, that space to play around a bit. Um, in a moment, I will show my screen and... This is maybe a good moment to, to say to the listeners on my podcast. Um, once I start talking about uh, the, the screenshot I have here, you can also go to the show notes and click on the image I will upload there so that you understand what I'm talking about. Now you see my screen. This could be a typical week of... An academic. Oh, well, of course, this this is very hypothetical. I prepared this with like nobody in mind in particular, and does not mean that you have to block your time like this. This is only an example. So, as you can see, like this person, uh, lucky them. They wake up very early in the morning. Great. They go either for a walk in the park or a yoga session. Great. Then they have their breakfast. And then from 9 to 12, this person sits down and writes. You know, writing is one of those um, tasks that end up being pushed uh, out of our daily routine because... It's usually not so urgent, but not doing that uh, really takes a toll on our work. So let's say this person is in a period 
where they need to like finish a certain piece of writing. And every day from nine to 12, they decide to write. Now, what I didn't include in this schedule uh, are the micro tasks. Ideally, this person knows step by step by step what they are going to write every every little session of that that block. Let's say the first twenty five minutes they will take um, to uh, write one paragraph, incorporating three um, journal articles they've read recently, and then they will take a five minute break, and then in the next um, hour they will try to go for like free writing without much stopping editing, just dumping everything. And after taking another break, they will come back and edit, maybe. That I didn't write you. You have to know that only for yourself. Moving on. Then this person every day at 12 o'clock, they go for lunch. Well, they socialize during their lunch time. Good for them. Um, sometimes with a friend, one-on-one -on -one lunch, sometimes with colleagues. And after lunch, they come back and they check their emails. I purposefully included emails after lunch. Most of us are more like, um, yeah, a bit distracted. I had, I had like good time during lunch and they, it's not so easy yet to get in the groove of work. That's a good moment to check emails. Um, and then they, they reply whatever they need to reply. Some days they schedule longer time to check their emails. But if you're a person who receives uh, tons of emails every day and have to answer all of them, well, you may need to include two or three such sessions. I don't know. It's your schedule. You do you. Moving on. Um, on Monday, imagining that this person is a is a PhD researcher, on Monday afternoon they have their meeting with their co-promoter. Great, that they take a good amount of time to discuss things, one and a half hours, and then they come back for another one and a half hours. They write uh, again. They start writing again with that newfound inspiration from the co-promoter, ideal case scenario. On Tuesday, this person uh, goes to interview one of their participants and right after the interview, they decide to transcribe uh, the audio recording. That's also good. The, the Tuesday goes off like that. But the evenings, well, the first evening on Monday, yeah, they give themselves some, some time to, to cook something simple and eat. And what a coincidence, they love singing, just like I do. So they go to their choir practice on Mondays, which means that they socialize, they um, keep doing their hobbies, they uh, engage in art and, and creative outlet. Um, so good for everything basically on tuesday they say okay tuesdays um i will spend uh my tuesday evenings with a friend having dinner and maybe go to the movies that friend is called lucy in this case so they go there on wednesday they do again the writing session lunch with a with a friend or co-worker checking emails then they decide to, to take some time to brainstorm on chapter three of their thesis. And then they schedule this time to do nothing, basically. just And they, they prohibit themselves from working, do nothing time. Whatever happens, happens. If that is something interesting uh, to do for you, why not try? Then also to to put their body into move a bit they go to their kickbox lesson and after that they come home they have their dinner they relax and have a quiet evening on thursday 
a similar, you know, yoga breakfast, writing, um, lunch, email session. And um, of course, this person has to do other things to, to earn their salary, which happens to be writing a certain type of report for that week. So they take one and a half hours to just uh, finish the report they, they have to write and send that. And after that, they have a meeting with their mentor. And they, they leave a bit early, they schedule to do some groceries afterwards, they do their groceries, go home, have dinner, relax. On Friday, a similar schedule before noon. In the afternoon, they take some time to plan their next week and then have another brainstorm session. And in the remaining time, until they go for their happy hour, they edit some of the writing they have done that week. Uh, and later on, you see there is a happy hour to go to, there is a concert, and on, on Saturday, there is an like, early morning yoga and a brunch with a friend, um, but otherwise time unscheduled. On Sunday, they feel the need somehow, mysteriously, to schedule cleaning their home. That sounds very familiar. And, and then go to movies in the afternoon on a, on a Sunday. Having shown you that possible version of, of an, uh, a time blocking schedule, don't be afraid. You don't have to schedule every waking hour or anything. And this is something that some people do. They prefer to do that. Great. I can't do that. I get very stressed when I see that, that full schedule. So I keep things a bit more, um, yeah, open, wide, lots of empty uh, slots in between. That works better for me. So you decide what's best for you. So how do I use this uh, formula, it, especially to work around my needs, I don't have a to-do list anymore. I prefer to schedule that thing once uh, a task shows up as a, as a to-do, either today, tomorrow, next week, next month, whatever. I schedule that anyway. And later on, even if I have to change the time of it, the scheduled task is already there and I move that around. And having said that, I often need to move things around a bit. I like that flexibility around um, my schedule. Yeah, so that I don't feel uh, enslaved to do a certain thing at a certain time. I like being flexible, but that does not mean that I don't have non-negotiables. On a given day or week, there will be some non-negotiable tasks that have to be tackled and those I don't move I put them where they're supposed to be and I try to get through them um, even if I don't feel like doing it by using the 10 minute rule um, so that's that's an important aspect I wanted to talk about is this no to-do list thing so that you you have less clutter around you on little papers or in your head. Oh, I have to do that too. I have to do that too. No, I write everything either as the subject of, of the blocked time period or under that, I list the, the micro tasks I will carry out. Another thing I do uh, is when I use an Outlook calendar, for instance, that is shared with my colleagues, uh, at least the, the, the time blocks that I'm busy, I'm flexible, I'm out of the office or I'm free. Um, I tend to keep some of the block time really as busy so that nobody else can schedule a meeting at that time or nobody tries to like call me in the middle of my like very focused work session. But during some of the planned time blocks, I uh, block it but indicate it to be free for instance if I'm check 
checking emails, if that's the task, I don't need 100% concentration on that. You can bother me, no problem. If it's a very important email that I need to like be very careful while uh, answering, I will schedule another time block just for that, where I will indicate myself as busy and work on that. So it's quite flexible. You can uh, make tasks out of other tasks or, or put things together. And having talked about uh, keeping some time blocks free, even though I know what I will do during that time, potentially, if nothing else comes up, um, I try to put those time periods as close to the lunchtime as possible. This is what I uh, saw in myself as I observed how my uh, brain works and the, my best productive times and all. I tend to have less pro productivity right before lunch and sometime after lunch. So I tend to keep those times as, as free. I try to schedule more like flexible work around that time. And the rest of the time, I uh, tend to do my more like deep work. And then I schedule those as busy times. And this also, this idea also helps you have control over the time where you allow for meetings that you are, that you have to attend. Um, for example, I'm always like blocked, busy, early in the morning and uh, late in the afternoon. So, so those times are not available for a colleague of mine to schedule a meeting with me. This concludes the, the tip of the day, time blocking. As I said, that, that screenshot, let it not scare you. You can choose to do this however you like because you are the boss of your own time at earth. So use your agency, do whatever uh, that, that you see fit, that, that suits you, suits your uh, work schedule, suits how your brain works and your circadian rhythm and all of that. To conclude, I invite you uh, once again to comment below and tell me what you think about this episode, if you like this tip or not, or if you want to know something else, if you want me to cover another area of, of uh, productivity, feel free to comment below and I will get back to you. And don't forget to like uh, the video and subscribe to my channel to be alerted of the upcoming videos. See you tomorrow for another tip. And until then, mind your own revisions.